Hello everyone, hope you all are doing good. In today's video, I would like to make a comparison between uh, the Ricoh GR3 and the Leica Q2. I have owned both of these cameras for a while. I have owned the GR3 for about 2 years and the Q2 for about 6 months and I have used them extensively over this period of time. And I would like to share my thoughts on using both of these cameras mainly for street photography. So if you are looking to pick up either of these cameras then stick around and hopefully this video can help you make a buying decision. If you enjoyed watching this video and you like such content then do consider subscribing to my channel as it really helps. In this video, I would like to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of each of these cameras and then move forward in highlighting some of the key differences in user experience from using these cameras. So now let's move to the main part of the video. First is the size. The first time you'll take a look at these cameras or you hold these cameras in your hand, the first thing you observe is the size difference. The Ricoh GR3 comes in around 257 grams. And uh, if you look at the size of the Ricoh GR3 and compare it with an iPhone 12 Pro Max, the Ricoh GR3 footprint is actually much smaller than that of the iPhone 12 Pro Max. The dimensions of the GR3 is about 4.3 into 2.4 inches and uh, the GR3 is actually super compact and it's a super small camera that can be carried along with you in your jean pocket or in your jacket and the size is actually one of the killer aspects of this camera. The build of the GR3 is not that great and I feel the buttons are rather flimsy. Now comparing this build with that of the Q2, the Leica is actually built like a tank. The Q2 has some weight and heft and it balances very well in your hand. Every inch of this camera screams quality and class. Looking at the weight and other dimensions of the Q2, the Q2 is definitely more chunky and not as compact as the GR3. The Leica Q2 being much more expensive than the GR3, one would expect a better quality and finish and that's what you get, a well-made product in your hands and that's what the Q2 is. Also, I would like to highlight some of the key differences in the build here. The Q2 is actually completely weather sealed and the GR3 is not. But the GR3 has at least one USB port and that can be used to transfer data and also for charging the camera. The Q2 has absolutely no ports and it's a pain to actually transfer data or charge the camera on the go. You always need a separate charging station to charge the battery externally and that is actually very annoying in my opinion. So now moving on to how does the image look. When you're comparing the image quality from either of these cameras, one should know that the GR3 has an APS-C sensor and the Q2 has a full frame sensor. Also the Leica has a faster f1.7 lens compared to the 2.8 on the GR3. The field of view is actually very similar in both of these cameras in terms of full frame terms. It's about 28 millimeters. Since the Q2 sports a full frame sensor and a much faster lens, the background blur or the bokeh is actually much more pleasing on the Q2. Since the Q2 has a larger sensor, the light gathering capability of the sensor is better and the optics on the Leica is far superior and outclasses the GR3 in terms of image quality. If you look at the ISO sensitivity range of the GR3 is actually much higher than that of the Q2. In terms of noise, I feel the GR3 images quickly fall apart over ISO 3200. Since the Q2 also has a higher megapixel count, the noise performance is also not that great in low light conditions when you bump up the ISO. But in good light, both of these cameras produce some stellar images. However, the images from the Q2 have absolutely no distortion or vignetting. The images from the GR3 do suffer from these issues. So in this section, I would just give it to the Leica Q2 because of the excellent, excellent optics and uh, beautiful, beautiful Leica glass. Both of these cameras output DNG RAW files and the dynamic range with the GR3 I feel is slightly better than that of the Q2, especially with highlight recovery. The JPEGs actually on the GR3 have much more room to be tuned and I feel that the Leica JPEGs don't look great straight out of the camera and need some tweaking in the settings to produce some better images. The room to tweak these JPEGs is actually much better on the GR3 in my opinion. So what are the common features that can be found on both of these cameras? Both cameras have the capability to wirelessly transfer images. I feel the Leica app is a bit more stable in uh, handling this Wi-Fi image transfer. Both these systems do not have any inbuilt flash. Uh, both these cameras have some sort of image stabilization built in which allows you to shoot at a lower shutter speed and thereby allowing you to shoot at lower ISOs. So next question is would you shoot video with the GR3 or the Q2? If you ever plan to use your GR3 for video work, I would recommend you to look elsewhere and stay away from thinking of shooting video with the Ricoh GR3. Not because of the image quality, but just the lack of any control while shooting video that is on the GR3. On the other hand, the Q2 is capable of shooting in 4K mode, good enough and it produces some beautiful pleasant looking video. But there's a lot of hunting noise that comes from the lens moving in and out during autofocus mode and it's probably due to the contrast detect autofocus system which is not so great but it works beautifully well when you shoot in manual focus mode. 
Next, uh, moving on to the battery life department. The battery life on the GR3 is not that great, but the replacement batteries for the GR3 are actually super small and also very cheap. One can easily carry four or five batteries and it does not take up much space in your camera bag. On the contrary, the Q2 battery life is excellent if you are just shooting with the EVF and the replacement batteries are also super super expensive and as I mentioned earlier the ability to charge the camera using the USB-C port and uh, lack of any of these ports and this uh, expensive batteries can be kind of a deal breaker for some who want to choose the Q2 over the GR3. And how do the menus on this camera feel? I feel the Ricoh GR3 has one of the best laid out menus in the current generation of cameras out there. And the presence of an amazing touch UI actually accentuates the overall user experience and takes it to the next level. The Q2 on the other hand has very simple and minimalistic menu that works very well with the Leica Ethos. And the thought process of less is more actually works very well in their favor as one can concentrate more on the shooting process rather than fiddling with the menus. But I feel the GR3 is kind of near perfect and Ricoh has done an excellent job with the touch UI enhancing the user experience. Now moving on to the autofocus and manual focus capabilities of both these cameras. The Ricoh GR3 has a hybrid uh, contrast as well as face detection autofocus system which delivers improved autofocus performance compared to the previous uh, generations of Ricoh cameras the GR or GR2 who are actually struggling mainly because of low contrast targets. Uh, the contrast based uh, autofocus system was not so great but it's uh, significantly improved on the GR3. The low light autofocus performance is still not that great. How does the Q2 autofocus work and the Q2 is still a contrast based autofocus system and it shares probably most of the characteristics from the Panasonic depth from defocus system for a single point autofocus acquisition the Q2 is actually reasonably swift and fast and I don't feel that the Q2 autofocus system is a slouch the continuous autofocus system is not that great on the Q2 also but the Leica Q2 has an excellent excellent manual focus mode it's still a fly-by-wire system but I think having all the markings um, the distance scales uh, on the Leica Q2 lens, the 28mm lens actually helps. There is focus peaking and it works very well with an excellent excellent uh electronic viewfinder the overall manual focusing um, experience that is if you want to do some zone focusing it works very very well on the Leica Q2 on the GR3 it has another arsenal which is the snap focus mode so you can quickly set the distance scale and for example uh, two meters and uh, you set the apertures to high values like f10 or anything above that and you don't need to worry much about autofocus so uh, when you have something in that range you're going to get it for sure so that's amazing and uh, so in terms of speed I think the GR3 GR3 um, has an upper hand over the Q2 in this aspect. Overall, the process of uh, shooting in manual mode is much more better on the Q2. There's a much more tactile feel and um, that uh, it slows you down that you're in the manual focus mode. So that experience on the Q2 is slightly better. So finally, um, what are the actually the pros and cons of the Ricoh GR3? So what works in favor of the Ricoh GR3 is uh, the size. It's very, very compact. It still sports an APS-C sensor, which is pretty good. The price of the Ricoh GR3, it still comes in around 800 euros these days, which is uh, an absolute, absolute steal for that price. And it's a super stealthy camera with a 24 megapixel sensor. And there is some sort of um, sensor stabilization that is present on this camera. What? I feel are the cons uh, is that this camera is not weather sealed. The battery life is poor, but um, um, yeah, you can buy cheaper batteries, third party batteries. The build quality is okay. The straight out of image JPEGs are not very pleasant. And uh, the lack of a dedicated viewfinder can throw off people and they might just uh, completely ignore this camera even before trying this camera and uh, the lack of a flippy screen. And if uh, Ricoh makes a Ricoh GR4, uh, maybe they can incorporate uh, these cons and make it a much more better camera. And if you look at uh, what are the pros for the Leica Q2, pro, the biggest pro for the Leica Q2 is the image quality and next is the shooting experience. It makes you slow down, think, compose and take the shot. So that's one of the biggest advantages of the Leica Q2. Biggest, biggest cons for the Leica Q2 is the price. Yeah, there's no way getting around it. But if you think uh, about the cost of a 28 millimeter uh, Leica lens, then um, the Q2 system is actually very cheap. It's the cheapest gateway into uh, the Leica ecosystem. Even the Leica Q is much more cheaper. So coming back to the overall shooting experience and my recommendation. So if you're someone who is um, doing just street photography, or is just getting into street photography and want something very small and stealthy that can be carried along with you everywhere, then I would highly recommend you to try the Ricoh GR3. And if you're not too picky on the image quality and the shooting experience and just absolutely enjoying the process of making a street image, that is uh, just being on the street, making photographs, uh, want to shoot quickly and um, 
then the GR3 is the way to go and it's the one for you and uh, I truly believe it's the undisputed street king. But if you're looking for something like a full frame camera that works across different genres of photography and uh, is excellent but an expensive street photography companion, then think no further than the Leica Q2. It's just 28 millimeters of jaw dropping image crispness and overall a much pleasant shooting experience. So that's about it in this video. I'll throw some of the images that I've recently made with the Q2 and the GR3 and uh, hope you like them. I also link some of my socials in the description. And uh, if you did enjoy watching this video, then it'd be great if you can uh, subscribe to my channel and hit that like button. And uh, thank you for watching and until the next one, take care and ciao ciao.